at Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland University where today the Muskies will host in-state rival Concordia of Wisconsin. Alongside the coach Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Chris, two in a row for us. We did that South game last night. We're out here at Lakeland University today. Both teams come in two and one, first conference conference game of the year, and a lot going on on the university today. It's homecoming for the Muskies, and it's their uh, 25th annual Cheese Bowl. Uh, Concordia leads in the series 14 to 10. Uh, how do you see this game playing out? Well, if uh, anybody has intentions to see the whole Badger game today, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think the, both teams are going to play a lot of nickel and a lot of dime defense. I think they're going to be throwing around the park. And uh, I don't know if that's the best idea with the weather. If you were with us last night, the weather was horrendous. And uh, because of the results of last night and this morning, the field, uh, as you're going to see today, is, is very beat up. So it's going to be... The, as you mentioned yesterday, I guess the sledding is going to be difficult, <laughs> even though we're on uh, as in October. As you look at your uh, TV screens and uh, look over on the right side, uh, Concordia was doing uh, warm-up drills along the lines, and uh, that's why the dirt is showing instead of grass. The field was actually in pretty good shape uh, prior to the teams coming out and warming up, but... Uh, with the weather being so bad the last couple of days, the field is uh, really, really soft. I mean, we saw a lot of kids slipping in warm-ups. Well, I'm happy to be out here. It's been a few years since we've been out here to see this. and uh, 2009. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I know it's been a few years, but I can't believe it's been that long. But glad we got uh, They asked us to come out. I know they talked to the office, and we're glad we come out here. Maybe we can do a basketball game or two. We used to do the men's right, and women's yeah, teams exactly. as well. and. Uh, you know, we'll probably do a UW Sheboygan basketball. Oh, well, that'll right? happen for sure. And that's uh, only about uh, two months away. I was looking at the uh, stat sheet, and uh, Chris had mentioned that both teams like to pass a lot. Actually, to my surprise, Lakeland has run the ball 118 times this year. They've passed it 114. Uh, so they're pretty balanced in that regard. Concordia does pass more. They've got 104 passes attempted to uh, 97 rushes, which uh, isn't too overwhelming, but uh, they still like to throw the ball around the yard a lot. Well, the thing that I, you know, I, I did stats and we come out here and they have all the stats on the program for us, so I'm glad I took the extra half hour to get this done. But <laughs> you the one thing better to do anyway, right, right? Right. Well, the thing I noticed about it, it is through three games, but you said they kind of a little bit of balance, but not a lot of success for Concordia on the ground. I mean, their lo leading receiver... I uh, was only averaging about 55 yards a game, Marty. And uh, Desmond Morris has 13 catches for Lakeland, and if you look at Concordia, they have three guys in double figures, Dante Edwards, Kevin Faulkner, and uh, Derek Espen. So uh, you're right, they do like to throw it. <coughs> we mentioned that both teams come in 2-1. and one. Uh, Both teams uh, going into last week were 2-0. and oh. They both lost last week. Concordia lost to Alma 31 to 28, and uh, Lakeland got crushed by uh, the number 10 team in the nation, Platteville, 56 to nothing. And just to show the disparity in conferences, Platteville's only ranked third, I think, uh, ranking-wise, ranked third in the conference. So uh, you mentioned yep. Whitewater and Oshkosh are ranked above them. Yeah, Mount Union, the the uh, defending national champs and perennial champion, you know, one of the powerhouses in all Division Three football is ranked number one. And Whitewater, who's won a few championships not, you know, two years ago, uh, they are ranked number two. Oshkosh, uh, who won their league last year, is ranked number four. And Platteville, ten. So that's just, just to show you how good football is in our state. But uh, for today, let's talk about the NACC conference. Lakeland coached by Colin Burton, Concordia by Maybe Greg Etter. Ball spotted on the 35-yard line for the kickoff, and we are off. Not a very good kick, picked up on the 26, and knocked down on about the 32. Well, and most of you have been watching us do high school football the last few years. A little bit different in college. Uh, one thing, of course, will be the uh, uh, 15 minutes per quarter, and, of course, stopping on first downs is the same, but... Uh, it's a little bit different. Be 
So we got 12 extra minutes of game time. And we'll see if Lakeland decides to throw it. Or they're going to put it on, uh, start to put it on the ground here. All right, that quarterback for uh, the Muskies is uh, Michael Whitley. A little bit of a jet sweep action. Whitley keeps it, and uh, he gets stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Not much going on there. Second and ten. There you see Whitley with the carry. He's actually their leading ball carrier with 42 carries. Second down. Muskie's got three wide receivers off to the right. Hand off to the running back who... Uh, has a good game. That was uh, Desmond Eddy. Eddy comes in with 118 yards. Eddy, the ball carrier, brought down by Arredondo. It's going to be third and about three. Give him a gain of about seven yards. Desmond Eddy comes all the way from Louisiana, Marty. Wow. Freshman. Another handoff to Eddy. He's not going to get it. Stacked up right at the 40. Maybe picked up a yard at best. It's going to be fourth down. Well, one thing I noticed, Marty, that Lakeland can only punt it Making ten times all year. Making stop was Robert Woods the third, by the way. They're going. All right, going for it on fourth down. First big play of the game. It's uh, fourth and about two. Let's see if they try to draw them offside. Nope, they're going for it. And Muskies can't handle a snap. Eddie falls on it for a loss, and uh, it's going to be Concordia Bowl. Unfortunate circumstance there, Marty. Just a uh, <coughs> drop ball. The ball's going to be slippery. It's coming out of the mud. For sure. Okay, first down and 10. Ball spotted on the 37-yard uh, line, is it? Concordia blew a fourth-quarter lead last week. Otherwise, they would be 3 and all. Dropping back, looking deep. Good coverage by Lakeland. And picked off by uh, Chris Dixon. Yeah, the senior DB from Griffin, Georgia. That ball just kind of hung in the air there. And the re wide receiver slipped. And that was probably a pre-play plan. This is the first play we're going to run from scrimmage. And... Uh, you know, on the slippery turf, the, the wide receiver has a big advantage, but when you just kind of run straight down the field, not a lot of cuts or anything. Right. Yeah, exactly. Good point. And that's kind of where uh, we had those long plays last night. Those wide receivers, for the most part, were uh, just heading down the field, not making a lot of sharp cuts. Whitley back at quarterback for Lakeland. Well, seven seconds ago we were here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whitley looking, the left-hander. Plotted it up to throw and then put it back down. Now he's running and uh, gets knocked out of bounds after a pretty nice gain. Boy, I hope we can see the jerseys by the time the game is over with the mud. I was telling the guys if we had a black and white monitor by the end of the game, both teams would look like they're all together. Yeah, it is sloppy. Okay, pickup of about four. I thought he gained a little more, but not. Whitley calls for the snap, hands it off to his running back, and trying to cut it back, but gets uh, very little, if any. Meeks, the ball carrier. Meeks on the carry. Who's up third down six for the Muskies? Number 15, Rondo Meeks, running sophomore running back. Third down and. Uh, Long six or a short seven, take your pick. Looking, nice pass by Whitley, he's got his receiver. Good pass and catch, Deslo Smith on the catch. First and ten for Lakeland. For Smith, that's his ninth catch of the game. Ball Our spotted. of the season, Marty. Yes, ball spotted right on the 35. Second and yards. Third and catches on the team. Five wide receivers this time. Whitley looking. 
Goes short, but his receiver could not hang on. It was a pretty easy pass and catch, but it goes incomplete. Michael Whitley also comes from Louisiana. I was reading uh, was Coach's bio or some information on the Lakeland website, and they said they do like to uh, recruit down, from down in the southeast. Not the southeast part of the state either. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> And off the Meeks, bounces it to the outside. He's got good yardage, gets knocked out of bounds, close to the 50-yard line. Meeks just a sophomore. You see him get a pretty good blocking right at the line of scrimmage. Gave him running room to the outside. Ball is spotted on the uh, about the 48. He's just 5'5", 145, Marty. Wow. Hand off to Meeks again, tries to bounce it to the outside, but gets hit for a loss all the way back to the 46. Sometimes you got to hit the hole that's called for, and you know, bouncing it to the outside isn't always going to work. Eleven fifteen left in the first quarter, no score. They are right up at the line too, Marty. They are... Yeah fast paced team left hander not a very good pass but the catch is made by uh, Jody Harrison pass completed to Jody Harrison it's going to be third down and about seven his tenth catch of the season ball spotted on the Concordia 49 yard line Whitley sends Meeks in motion off to the right. And not a very good snap, but he, Whitley able to gather it in. He's not going to get the first down, gets knocked out of bounds. Be interesting to see what they do here, Chris, because... Uh, Penalty. Holding. Back a little bit further. Can we see if there's any holding anywhere? He's going to grab 79. Yeah, 79 it might have been on pushing the guy down from behind. See what the call is. Terry Verstrati is our official in the white hat. Holding on Lakeland. And uh, its penalty is declined. And give Whitley maybe a yard of a gain at best. It's going to be fourth and about six. Well, third and... Oh, fourth and six. They're not taking a penalty. Should be fourth and six. Fourth and six, yep. Actually give them no gain. So now I would probably... Well spotted on the 49 yet. I'd probably punt here, Marty, but uh, they like to go for it. I know a lot. No wind at this point. Flag is just uh, on the pole hanging limp. Had rain all morning. Field is in bad shape. Just like and the last time they were on fourth down. Whitley looking... And we got a flag. Oh, wow. And Whitley is tackled on the 40-yard line. Loss of 11. Push in the back. Legal back block in the back, Marty. Here you're going to see. You're going to take a look. Will, give me the ball. Right there. Okay. We did get the pass away incomplete. Okay. Kowalski there, pushing him there, and, you know, it's so slippery, Marty. It's tough to establish anything. Okay, first down for Concordia. Again, they have excellent field position. First uh, offensive play resulted in an interception. At the controls is Aaron Nixon, number 11. He threw that interception. There's another difference, Chris between college and high school. Once you step out of, uh, over the line in high school, the play is dead, and they call a five-yard penalty. In college, you can go over the line and then uh, and uh, still get back and run the play. Okay, no play, no gain on that play. Second down and 10. Aaron Nixon from Aguanago, a one-time power. They uh, play in a, one of the toughest leagues in the state, the Classic Eight conference in high school. 
Jet sweep to hand it off. And a great tackle made. The ball carrier was Isaiah Tennant. But uh, Tennant Dante Roel making the tackle. Sorry about that. Tennant from Concordia there, number one. He's from Sacramento, California. Tough, tough going today. Field position, turnover is going to be a, maybe a key here. 8.53 and counting. Core number one. Third down and about 14. Oh. Hand came across the face mask, Chris. I wouldn't have been surprised if they threw a flag, but uh, they didn't. And uh, Nixon got sacked. Yeah, they sent a uh, corner off the side here. Lewis is going to come. Wasn't on the receiver, and that is me, Dad. I got this one here. Mason set the punt for the Falcons. Mike Wynn set to receive. Kick is away. A high wobbler, and of course, when it hits <laughs> the turf, it's not going to bounce anywhere. Reminds me of the battle at Waterloo. You hear about that, Adam? He had a cal cannonade at the beginning before the troops started to engage, but didn't do any damage. Cannonball just landed in the mud because it rained the night before. I was a fired major, by the way. <laughs> Who are you talking to, by the way? You want to introduce Not him? Not you. You want to introduce him? That is uh, Aaron Gutcheck. He's uh, the SID here at Lakeland University. Aaron does a heck of a Adam. job. Adam. 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 I knew that. Sorry, Adam. They couldn't hear you. I want to say that again. <laughs> All right, another shot for Lakeland. A little better field position this time, Chris. Third time with the ball, and we're just under eight minutes. Yeah, that's a lot of possessions. Pretty good block on the edge. Are they going to get holding? Nope. Making the court, making the edge block was uh, Michael Wyatt. Michael Wynn, pardon me, springing the ball carrier. I didn't catch a number of that kid. It was Desmond Eddy, number 22, our freshman from Louisiana. Okay, good. Picks up nine yards on the play. Just seems like everything's in slow motion because of the mud. Yeah, right. exactly. People, can't. no footing. Gail Sayers was a real good yep. runner in the rain because he ran flat-footed. And uh, that helped him a lot, but uh, Whitley gets hit back at the 35. and lose yardage on that play. The Kansas Comet? The Kansas Comet, right. Who did he play for, by the way? Gail <laughs> Sears. You know? I don't know. I know they're doing well this year, Marty. That's all I know. Hey, watch it, buddy. I won't be your friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hand off and hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picks up a yard at best. Eddie on the carry again. I have to tell you, Marty, watching the Bears play the other day, they're not a very good team. They're a bad team. They're struggling. They are struggling. Well, and their starting quarterback is out besides. Yep. All right, third down and about four. And the rain is starting to pick up. Fourteen, Marty. pardon me. got the changing balls here. Yeah. And you mentioned something really good last night. It, you know, it's ju not just only the balls. One, only well, one thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just throwing the ball, but you made a good point when you have to grip the ball as yeah, well. Yeah, right, exactly. And, and it's going to be the same here, too. When you, you're talking about two teams that like to throw the football. Whitley bounces through the line of scrimmage. Scrimmage picks up a few yards, not much, gets it up to the 40. And this time they're going to punt, Marty. Yeah, I think they should too. A little bit farther than. A little too far. Yeah. 
Hunter's Brandon Pribinow. He's from Brilliant. I got him averaging uh, 32 yards per punt this year. Tennant is the uh, lone return man for uh, the Falcons. Oh, down. scooped it up, but his knee was down. He's going to be called down at the 26, and uh, that's going to be a loss of nine. Now, we saw this last night, Marty, problems with snapping oh. on fumbles. And in college football or in high school, once your knee is down, you're down. It's not like the pros. Where you can get up and run, you're right. So a really good field position from Concordia now. Inside Richard, the 30. What are they at? 26? Richard Bart's in the running that top camera. Scott Mailoff in the truck is our director today. Mario Mendez is our student uh, assistant. And Nixon's pass is incomplete. Incomplete Nixon. Chris Wright is our play-by-play -play guy, and I'm Mike Martin. I'm doing our. Chris is our color guy. I'm the play-by-play -play guy. Good pressure by Lakeland that time, forcing Nixon to just basically get rid of it. Getting hard to read the numbers, Chris. It is, especially on some of the guys. Yeah. Nixon straight back. Passes woefully short, incomplete. Well, it's just not going anywhere. If you're an offensive coordinator, Chris, what kind? Of, what are you running in this kind of weather? Misdirection. I'm running the football more too. I'm running the ball. Short passing game. Short passing game. Cordia looks pretty big in the offensive line. I wonder if they could line up, you know, and try to overpower him. Runs up the middle and off tackle and stuff. Nixon has a had a receiver wide open, threw it behind him, and uh, goes incomplete. Why does it go for it here? Unless they got a field goal kicker. Uh, their field goal kicker, Marty, has attempted zero field goals. I think we'll run a play then. <laughs> See Carol Grice in the backfield with uh, Nixon. With three wideouts to the right. Good snap. Nixon looking. And it passes uh, way off. Nixon pass incomplete. You got to think, Chris, he's having trouble gripping the ball, too. I mean, just the way those passes are coming out of his hand. Well, he came in at throwing 65%, which is a pretty high rate. Uh, Whitley, on the other hand, is, is at about 48%. For when you think of an accurate passer like that, not to complain, uh, complete anything, obviously something's wrong, Marty. Right. Boy, that series took 23 seconds. <laughs> 5.20 left in the first quarter. No score. We're out here at Lakeland University playing at Taylor Field. Send Meeks out into a slot position. Whitley, That's short what you pass. Need to do. He's got his receiver. Kicks up a little bit of a block, no flag. Slips through and is out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Making the grab was uh, Keslo Smith. There you see, short pass right over the middle. And there he goes. Watch this block on the bottom, right there. Well, we mentioned before with Smith, he's only got eight catches coming in today, but it was for 196 yards. So he's a big, big game gainer. 34 yard play. Is that right? 34? Okay. Just got to check with the official stats person.
keeper. Yeah, Whitley on a keeper. Chris is right. And, uh, tried to take it inside and then bounced it to the outside and picked up pretty good yards. Well, flipped the field and Lakeland for the first time is a, has an opportunity to score here. Nice big play. I like that short passing game and idea. Keep that in the back of our minds here. First down. Whitley takes a snap. Looking down the field. He's got a man short and uh, overthrew the intended receiver, Peyton Peterson. Peterson was open, and that was one of those short plays again, but uh, Whitley just couldn't get on the ball, Marty. It's right. the same type of route. I watched that kind of work, and Peterson was there, and he just misfired on it. Too bad. Ball on the 31 yard line, 419 left. Well, he hands it off to Meeks, bounces it back to the inside and picks up uh, about five yards. And we get a flag on the play. Let's see if we can, it's gonna happen up near the top of your screen. Yeah, I think we got a block in the back. Look like uh, Smith might have uh, did the illegal block. They don't. Holding on Lakeland. Yeah, I happened right near the line of scrimmage. I got the wide receiver. It was over on that side. Still second down. It's too bad too because it's a nice little gainer. Right. You're right, absolutely. Still going to be second down, but now it's going to be about 20 yards. Actually, ball is spotted on the 39, so it's about 18. Bad snap. <laughs> Was that Meeks? Meeks just ran right in front of his quarterback, scooped the ball off the ground, and ran with it. Watch this. Boo! Oh, there he goes. Might as well pick it up. It's going to come to me anyways. Albert Gorlitz, so from Concordia, number 21, from Owen Withy. He laid a big hit there on Meeks. You mentioned before, Meeks, not a big, big ball carrier. It's 5'5", 145. And the referee is saying, why do we even change balls? All they do is throw it in the ground. Oh, nice, nice catch. Very nice catch made by Pete Peterson. It's going to be fourth down and about five. Peterson came in with three catches for 21 yards. Two fifty and running the clock. This is the deepest penetration either team has had so far in the game. Whitley looking, trying to get the edge, can't do it. Picks up a real nice block in the backfield, and then he slips down, and it's going to be a big loss all the way back outside the 40. Well, the idea was right, Marty, but you don't go to the part of the field, the 40 there, where it's the muddiest. He should have seen that <laughs> before he <laughs> backtracked this way. Yeah, really. Not really good with his GPS identification there, Marty. <laughs> that was good. Well, look at the field right there. That's like the... You know what? It looks muddy all over to me. <laughs> I don't know, that 40 right there, it looks like where Concordia did most of their warm-ups. Good snap, fake handoff. Nixon put the ball in the stomach of the uh, jet sweep man, but then he pulled it out and uh, didn't, didn't get a couple of yards. The fake was to uh, number one, Isaiah Tennant. Nixon... Uh, Nixon carried the ball now. That's at 80 yards coming in.
Lakeland uh, a little too early, trying to time the blitz, but uh, didn't do it very well. I don't think the turf helped him either, Marty. Watch this. He's going to creep up. Whoop, whoops. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my. Are they giving him the first down? It's pretty close. I guess they're not going to do it. I would say he's going to be about a half a yard short. I don't even think it's going to be that far, Chris. Jeez. Oh. Okay. Adam was very happy. He didn't mean he didn't have to move his computer too much. Oh, now they're saying maybe not. Oh, come on. Terry? Uh, you know, they wouldn't be pulling this if uh, it was raining out. It is raining out. Yeah, it's not raining out. Be a man. <laughs> Open a window. All right, get your shit up. Oh. We're back at Lakeland College. Nixon uh, in the backfield. It's, they're going to call it second and one. Looked like they had a first down, but not quite on that penalty. Man in motion is Tennant. They fake to him. Nixon spins away, throws, and it's short, incomplete. You know, on a, on a normal day, I would say that's a great call. But when you're third, second, and short, just well, just maybe just get the first yeah. down. You could, the well, only no, reason because I, you might just slip here on third down, and now you know just make it, things a little more difficult. Right? Yeah, it is raining in, isn't it? Window open didn't work so good. The only reason why it's probably not too bad, Chris, is because they do have third down to yeah. uh, run the ball up the middle. The other thing is, this is another thing I never was too sure about. You know, when you out, you need six inches and you're still going out of the shotgun, Marty. Yeah, I know. We've we've talked you, about that you've before. Met, you've mentioned it before. <laughs> oh, see, now he's going to... Well, maybe no, not. not. Oh, yeah. Offside, Lakeland. He didn't want to throw the flag and get it dirty. You know, even the officials have a hard time <laughs> running on the field. It's so muddy and unstable. I think it's offside on... Uh, I, it, well, I, now here's what I think it was. I thought it was offside on Lakeland, but the quarterback just walked up to the line and didn't become set. That could be. It'll be interesting to see what they come up with. You are right, sir. Illegal procedure on Concordia. I actually see. Now all of a sudden you got your second and uh, half a foot to uh, yeah, five and a foot, five and a half a foot. Minute thirty for number one. Here we go. Looks like Lakeland's coming. Send two. And the receiver, Tennant, uh, made a nice catch, got it in Lakeland territory. It all depends on the spot again, Chris. Nice little simple pass into the flat. Something I think both teams, if they're going to throw the ball, need to do. Oh, marking it way back at the 50. What? It's going to be fourth down and one. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm with I, you there. He was way over. He was on like the 49 or 48. Oh, and the shotgun. Ducking under center again. Ah, trying the old Aaron Rodgers. And now we get a plague. Delay a game. And uh, we'll take the penalty and punt. There's 41.8 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh... I think that was a smart play, Chris. How about you? I don't. <laughs> I mean, if they jump, you get the first down, right? I, I would have just gone for it there, Marty. I would have just gone for it. 
You're half a foot away. Your team can't get you a half a foot with the quarterback. Con quarterback controls when he can, you know, get the ball to him. A good catch and the left-footed kicker. There you go. Does not get any kind of a bounce. Got a real tough break there. Jacob Mason was the uh, punter. And, uh, just nothing happening there. You know what? You just gained 11 yards, Marty. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the punt was 16, but because of the five-yard delayed penalty. Okay, it's first and 10 for Lakeland again. One, two, three, four. Their fifth possession of the first quarter. First and ten for the Muskies. You know, how do you even keep a ball like that halfway clean? Ball is uh, inside the 40 at the 39. Okay. Whitley at the controls. And uh, we have a fumble. Concordia is running off the field, Marty. Concordia got it. Couldn't see what happened. The ball never cleared the line of scrimmage, it looks like. Wonder if it hit hit one of the linemen or maybe just didn't clear the uh, center's rump. Twenty nine point three seconds left in the first. And we are at the bottom of the page, Chris. Ball spotted on the 38. Well, if they run it here, Marty, you get to uh, be one play. If they don't, it could be three plays. Their last possession was 23 sec. One of their possessions was 23 seconds. Takes in on a quick pass out to the side. His big receiver making the catch that time was uh, Dominic Saragalia. Now be Clock the is running. Quarter, Marty. Could be it, yep. At the end of one quarter of play at uh, Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland University, it's Concordia, Wisconsin 0, Lakeland 0. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. You're doing great. Let's just, we're going to try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button the seat. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Back at uh, Lakeland University, it's second down and eight for Concordia. We start uh, second quarter action, no score. Nixon looking down the field, Lakeland getting a good rush. Nixon avoids one tackler, gets his pass off and it's complete. Big gainer for uh, the Falcons, making that catch was Tyler Majeski. Majewski on the reception, tackled by Lewis. Boy, oh boy, they had him in the backfield, Chris, and they couldn't get him down. Well, the traction again there, and Nixon had more time. First goal, ball spotted on the uh, nine-yard line. First real threat. Threat inside the ten. Concordia's down here before. Uh, time they get him. Good sack made that time by Eris Hargo. Hargro. Nixon sack by Hargrove with uh, third sack on the season and a big time for the 
The fish to get one there, Marty. Set. It's going to be second down in gold, but the ball is spotted all the way back at the wow. 20. Two wide receivers on either side. little swing pass out to his running back, Grice, and he gets nailed. He got popped hard, knocked down at the 15-yard line, pick up a five. Hard five, I might add. It's going to be third down and goal. Calling it the 16-yard line. The widest on the uh, right side is uh, Dominic Saragalia. Big kid, 6'4". Nixon. Lloyd's one tech picks up a good block. Pass into the end zone is touchdown! This is the tenant. Watch this block. Down at the bottom of your shoe. Boom! Right there. Wow, and, and great uh, footwork there by yeah. Tennant. He was in the corner of the end zone. That for Nixon is his fifth touchdown of the season. Touchdown pass? Yep. Wow, I thought he'd have more than that. All right, they're looking to kick it out on the, up on the tent, Chris. Let's see if he can get it up there. Mason, snap is there, and the kick is up and good. Well, it was offside Lakeland, so they just yeah. went ahead and kicked it. and Went through at the play. Jared Verstrati asking the uh, Concordia sideline, do you want to accept the penalty? And I think they're not going to accept it. They'll take the extra point. With uh, 13.01 left in the second quarter, it's 7 to nothing, Concordia. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Back at uh, Lakeland University where Concordia took over in a great field position on a Lakeland fumble and uh, were able to march it in. The key play of the drive was uh, the 15 yard scoring pass. Uh, there was also, I thought, a long pass yep. in there. I don't think I ever put it down, actually. Or is it? Right down here. here at the bottom. Oh, so right here. 84 for... Yeah, that was a 27 yarder. Wow. That was the one we were missing. Well, before that, they only had seven yards passing before that drive. No first down. They get a first down and a touchdown on the same drive. Ball taken on about the 24-yard uh, line. And the return man gets it out near the 40. So good field position to start off for Lakeland. You see it. It's going to be Austin 10 Muskies. Well, up until this point, Marty, it's just kind of been back and forth, back and forth. Look at that. There's Look a little field right in that area. Oh. There's hardly any grass. Back and forth and back and forth. Now there's a little, a little pressure put on the offense here. Just under 13 minutes of quarter number two. Now they're trailing. Yeah, let's see what the old left-hander can come up with. Whitley on a handoff to Meeks. Look at that. And nice run. Good. Good yardage on that play. Smith on the carry. Usually we talk about him catching passes, but uh, made an excellent run that time. 
Got it into a Concordia territory at about the 47. Yeah, he's only carried the ball twice before on the season, Marty. Holy cow. It's not very much. Should maybe give it to him more often. Trying to bounce it to the outside. He gets around the corner and gets knocked out of bounds. Into the mud. Yeah. Looks like near the 40-yard line, so he did pick up positive yardage again. It's going to be second down for Lakeland. Get a gain of about six. Well, they don't play out here, Marty, for three weeks, so Field is going to have a few weeks to get back to normal, but it's going to take a while <laughs> oh, for sure. after today. Yeah. This is really getting tore up, and we're not even halfway through the uh, second quarter. Smith again. Bounces, kept his balance, and got it up about to the 35. He's got a first down, I think. Well, and the game has been played basically between the 30 and the, you know. Yeah. The, actually, a lot of it's between the 35 and the 35, and that's where it's just a mess. If you get down inside uh, the red zone area, footing will be a little easier for you, but you got to get there, boys. A lot of wideouts. Three of them down at the uh, bottom of your screen. You can see two of them. Almost over Whitley's head. He made a great catch and oh, gets ouch. nailed back. And yeah, that looked like a dangerous hit. Watch him get bent backwards. Whoop, good catch. Right there. Ugh. This might have been a case where it might have been a good thing that it was slippery out there. Exactly, yeah. Good point. Second down and ten. Win in the slot on the left side. Joined over there by uh, another bad snap. Whitley dodging, gets it to his receiver, the short guy, who's actually pretty tall. <laughs> Richard Marsh, Mike Show. Yeah, he's 6'4", Marty. That's the kind of stuff I like when they're kind of dragging that trail receiver across the middle there. Let him do the work, gaining the yards for you. Third down and one. Third down and reasonable. Yep. But again, out of the shotgun, Marty. Hey, that's what they do. Whitley's uh, wobbly pass is complete to uh, Desmond Morris who made a nice catch. Again, Chris going with the short yep. pass. Morris from the Dells made a nice catch, number 11. First and 10 ball spotted on the 14 yard line. About a 12 yard gain. Whitley keeps it, spins off a tackler and uh, lunges forward near the 10 yard line. The old Xbox move there. Yeah. It looked like a miscommunication. Was Smith supposed to go in the same direction? Brings up second and seven. Well, they're only giving him three yards on that pickup. Good drive here. Ball spotted on the 11. Whitley in the backfield at quarterback. Keslo Smith is a running back alongside him. And, uh, oh, he gets by a tackler. I wouldn't be surprised if Smith gets the penalty. Yep. I, I agree with you. Face mask, offensive. Watch this here, boys. Tries to do the stiff arm, but uh, may have got some face mask right oh, there. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's what they're going to get. Uh, we Morris has, uh, you can see his number 11 on the front of his jersey, nice and clean. But when you look at the back, 
<laughs> you can't hardly tell. They're what? giving the face mask on Concordia. Oh my. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, really. First and goal. Uh, they got the wrong wrong guy. <laughs> you could see it on the replay as well. Marty, you were right on that call. I just don't think. I think they saw it correctly. They just saw the wrong. Here, watch it right here, Marty. The flag went out already. Oh. That was that was the before that was before on the face mask That's earlier the in the play. play. Yeah, the face mask happened earlier the on. Yeah. Good job on the replay, Scott. Uh oh. Now what are we doing? Redo. No, <laughs> they're not going to redo. It'll be uh, first and goal, Lakeland. On the nine, the eight. Eight, five, five yard, yard line. line, seven yard line. First and goal on the five. Adam trying to fix his computer before the play gets run. Whitley bounces to the outside, has a receiver in the end zone, and it falls incomplete. There were about three different players that could have had it. Two of them were defenders, but it does go incomplete. Here's that play, goal. Marty. Right See there, him. looks like the first, and then he comes up with his hand and grabs our face mask. I would call that a horse apiece. <laughs> That's all right. We're playing at home. We'll take the call. Well, process overload. <laughs> Smith trying to get to the outside. Too many defenders. He gets knocked out of bounds near the 10. The third and goal. Oh yeah, he's outside the ten even, Chris. It's gonna be the thirteen yard line a loss of eight. Oh my. Ugh. Whitley looks pretty comfortable rolling to his right, Chris, and throwing or to his left, pardon me, and throwing with that left hand. Does he know which ones are his blockers and the defenders? <laughs> oh, good defensive play out there by Concordia Whitley. Looked like he had a man open, but the, the defender came in and knocked the ball away. There you see it. And the defender comes up and knocks it away. Pass incomplete. I just saw it with the jersey colors. <laughs> I know, when he was scrambling. <laughs> who's, who's my guy? Who's blocking for me and who's trying to knock me down? You know, and they both have white helmets, so you can't right. distinguish that way. Right. Whitley looking, standing in the pocket, fires to the end zone, passes incomplete. Nobody was open, Marty. Nope. And he tried to squeeze it in there to Morris, but uh, well covered by Concordia. And the first opportunity for the fish to score, and they come out empty. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. So. Homecoming here at Lakeland are also playing for the Cheese Bowl, 25th annual Cheese Bowl. Uh, Lakeland uh, offense uh, trudging here to their uh, two benches. Well, Lakeland's won the last two of those Cheese Bowls, Marty. Really? Yep. Good for them. I'm a big fan of cheese. Colin Burton, their head coach, is uh, undefeated in Cheese Bowls. Oh, pass goes out to the 20-yard line. Passes uh, to Edwards. Second down and one. Got a clean jersey in the backfield there, Chris. Nixon on a fake handoff. 
Got me, Marty. Yeah, you got me too. I was following that white jersey. I was following a Haas there. And if he would have been carrying the ball, he would have had a nice gain. <laughs> yeah. Loss of four. Yep. Just kept it himself. Fooled me. Snap. Nixon looking down the field. Goes to his decision. short man. And uh, making the catch and run was Logan Haas. He gets knocked down outside the 25-yard uh, line. Nice little catch. Kept his eye on the ball. Boom. Tries to lower the boom, but uh, play from tackler gets him. It's going to be first and ten. Ball is spotted on the uh, 29. Where are they going to put that ball down? Gary Klein walking the sidelines from the press. I saw him already today, Marty. I saw him at the uh, Wiener races. At uh, Allen Al's for oh, German okay. Fest, right. Oktoberfest. Passes behind the intended receiver, Flag down. Eric Espen. Flag down. Looks like it's on Concordia. Terry Bristrati talking to the uh, Lakeland sideline. Illegal procedure on Concordia is declined, so it'll just be an incomplete pass. Got that, Adam? We're working together up here. They didn't know we were coming, Chris. And everybody, everybody claimed their spot up here, so we uh, asked Adam to slide over a little bit, and he was more than willing to do it. That's what he'll say today, but wait till Monday at the office. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know what's going on. Cram the SID out here. Nobody tells me anything. Okay, the pass again was complete to uh, Haas for just a very short game, not much there. Still think that's the way to go, the short pass, and that time he just couldn't get his footing. But uh, that play's worked before for the Falcons. Looks like a no-gainer, huh? Completed pass, but for no yards. Two yards. There that guy with the down marker finally moved. Thirty-one. Nixon going deep. He's got a receiver out there, but he was double covered. The pass goes incomplete. That's what we thought we were gonna see today. Nice throws down the field. Alright. Through a nice ball here. But not maybe the best decision in the double coverage, like Marty said. Right. Kind of reminded me of that uh, number four for the Packers from years gone by. Oh, that's a quarterback. Mason on the punt and Mike Owens at the receive. You know who I mean, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> big fan of mine. I'm uh, a big Brett Favre fan. Third punt for Mason. End over end. Oh, he got a roll that time. <laughs> I got it. Ah, there go the pants. Have to yeah. wash those. Kelvin Trammell on the stop there, or the downing the ball. He's a freshman from Riverside. And you know what's going to be the best part about that? Film session with the team. <laughs> They'll have a good time with yep. that one. Let's watch the freshman, Kelvin Trammell, here as he downs the ball. What? Oh. <laughs> I wonder if he's any relation to Allen. Well, we're at 518. Lakeland with this high potent offense. It's been stymied by the uh, turf today, I think, Marty. Yeah, I hear More you. than anything. You're exactly right. Stymied by the turf. 
Makes uh, wings out to the uh, right side. Whitley, short pass oh. right through the hands of the intended receiver, Desmond Morris. See, and that's the play. That's the play that's been working. Just got to catch the football. I know we have to be somewhat forgiving, Chris, but just that one's so not easy. That, that to one's too easy. You, know, you got to catch those walls. That one's got to be made. Second down and 10, 5.14 left. And off running back had a big hole, but it closed up pretty quickly. Let's uh, sp uh, spot it right at the 40. Maxwell the, the Fisher, best, I think, made the tackle. Some of the best turf, <laughs> excuse me, the best mud right here. This is, this is prime territory right here. Look at that. Yuck. I've used that word twice now, Marty. I know, that's okay. We don't mind that. Sneaks again. Oh, good hard run quickness. When you don't have to make cuts, you can just run uh, north and south. It makes a big difference. Meek's having a lot of success on the ground. A lot of success. Maybe he's a mutter. Adam, what do you got for Meek's on rushing, do you know? Maybe his mother was a mutter. His, his mother was a mother. Yep, as Kramer <laughs> would say. Ball is spotted on the 46-yard line. Another six-yard gain for had, uh, Meeks. I had Meeks. Probably that's it's about 25, 30. Oops. Whoa! Bad snap. This is going to hurt. That's going to be about a 12-yard loss, I believe. Ay, ay, ay. Whitley making the recover, recovery. To be second round for the Huskies. Ball is spotted back inside the 35, right at the 35. That's what you run into in this kind of weather when you have to make sustained long drives. You know, at some point you're more apt to have a miscue of some sort. Correct. Uh, Boy, when it's that many yards, that's really tough. Yep, they're only rushing four and dropping eight. That's why I got to do this. Yeah, short pass, complete up to about the 42. Yep. When the linebackers drop back and the defenders drop back, you just got to go between the line and the linebackers, just like that, and take your small chunks. That was a good decision there. Got part of it back. Still going to set up third and a 15, but... Clock stop. 2.58 until halftime. New ball. Good shot. New ball as we get back to the 40 here. Richard wiping off the uh, monitor. Not the monitor, is the uh, camera. Get those raindrops out of the way. See what's happening. Look at that area there. Oh. Yeah, that's bad news. Whitley makes a nice catch. That goes short, and as a receiver again, dropped the ball. That time it was Michael Wynn. Two drops on this series, Marty. It's going to force the Muskies to punt. Yeah, and you got to punt it. Don't want to give them a good field position with uh, such little time left. And they've had struggles here on the uh, punting. Remember, he put his knee down before. Right, yeah, not a very good snap. There's been Again, we saw this yesterday, last night in the high school games. They actually put the punter real close to the defender here. Sorry about that. That was a good snap and catch. And we got some roughing of the punter. This, oh, <laughs> look at the ball just hit and stop. And he's hurt. The Lakeland punter is down. And that'll be the big 15-yarder, yeah, which that'll will be, a be first close down. to no, a first down. No, it won't. Ah, yes, yes, you are right. It will be, be very close. close. Uh, could be automatic, automatic first down. We were talking after the game, the South game last night, about uh, cleaning uniforms, and uh, 
Mrs. Rice, uh, Scott Rice's wife, Jacob's mom, was saying that each player is responsible for taking their uniform home and washing it. I wonder if Lakeland does that. No. <laughs> Take it back to the dorm. <laughs> <laughs> That would create a a mess. Mom down in Delavan. Hey mom, <laughs> can you drive up wash my uni? <laughs> oh man. First down for the fish. Alrighty. And they got two thirty five left and they got all their timeouts, Marty. Ball is spotted at the forty four. All the umbrellas are out. Yeah. It's nothing like yesterday, Marty. That was just a torrential. Yeah, it, would consistent it rained very hard. And if uh, the air is just a soft, you know, and if it was rain. raining like that on this field, this field is oh. not in it, as good oh. a shape. The grass just wasn't as lush oh. as it was on at South, but uh, that'd be bad. Smith leaning forward. With the pass complete to Jesus Smith. Another one uh, of those uh, short plays. Well, you could here you'll see it on replay. I like this. I like that. See right in front of the linebackers. Get your little chunks. You know, it's one thing. You know, you say, well, you got to be hurry up. Well, they already play fast, Marty. So this isn't something uncommon for Lakeland. Let's see if this time Morris is going to come across number eleven. He's way down here. Whitley. Oh, it was Morris. Yeah. That was my play. I'll tell you that that kind of a pass by Whitley leaves his wide receiver wide open to a big hit. You got to get the ball down. Yeah. Watch he's jumping up in the air to make a catch, and there are two defenders right there. Yeah, that's. And uh, I think they're going to get a targeting on this. We're a little bit behind on the time here with the clock. There you go. Taz. There we go. See what the call is. Personal foul on Concordia. Yeah, and that's something they look a lot at, especially at college. Oh, you know, there's Pete Barth down there, too. Does stuff down here at Lakeland. Yeah. And, uh, Former editor, sports editor at the press. I know they do that a lot, though, that targeting thing at the uh, college level lead to an injection as well. Yes, I think if it's a uh, similar type uh, infraction, you know, unsportsmanlike type thing, that uh, could be a ejection. You're right. Trying to bounce it to the outside. And does. Gets down the sideline before finally being tackled was Desmond Eddy. Looked like there was Watch nothing him. here. I know. And then he goes to the outside, and like I said, he's he knows where he's going, but the defenders don't. Okay, it's a great head and shoulder speak. There's still plenty of time, and second chance inside the red zone in the quarter for the Muskies. Let's see if they can get in there this time. Time is not a factor. Ball on about the 14-yard line. Whitley hands it off again. Running back gets it down near the 10. Ball was on the 14. It's going to be second down. Whistle's blowing. We got a timeout. 141 left. Terry Verstrati signaling up to uh, the press box to, for the timer to put 135 on. That was Dennis Semp running the clock. Dennis, a little quicker next time, please. <laughs> Could oh, be. Oh, right Might up be. the middle. Banged in. The fumble. Oh, no. I think he's down. He fumbled it when he hit the ground, which uh, makes him down first. 
Here's the replay. Right up the middle. Oh. Yeah, yeah well, he, he was down definitely. He landed on the two. And the running game is working for the Muskies. Something you can put in your back pocket at halftime is success. Ball is inside the uh, five near the one or two yard line. We'll call it the two. Fake on the jet sweep and Whitley takes it in for the score. There's your misdirection, Chris. I like the running on the series, Marty. Yeah, me too, and there you see it. Nice big opening on the right side of the line. Lakeland uh, taking it from the 34, 66 yards for a score. Well, there, uh, Conrad Foss is their extra point guy, but he's only three of six this year, Marty, which tells me that they well, go for it a lot. This is not a good day to be attempting extra points either. Nope, now they're going to talk about it here. Time out. Lakeland uh, looking at going for two. Well, with 102 left in the half, big score to come back after they trailed there, Marty. It was a great drive. I mean, it was extended. 60, I got it at about 66 yards. I mean, they uh, kept pushing it down. I like your comment, too, about uh, running the ball more. Yeah, and you can't. It's just difficult to establish drives now. Each team has won, and that's why we're basically knotted. Also, the pass plays that Lakeland attempted, almost all of them were uh, reasonably short, within 10 yards of you know, the receiver catching the ball and then letting them run. Looks like they're sending out the uh, go for two team. Don't you just wish you could be playing football out there now? Mm, well, I wish I was younger. <laughs> I could play football like that. Yeah. No, not at my current age. I, I don't think I can. All righty, here we go. Looking for two to take the lead. Right now it's 7-6 uh, to six Concordia. Little swing pass. Oh, nice move after the catch by, uh, I think that was Meeks. It's hard to tell. <laughs> we apologize. No, he's low Smith. I don't know how you can see those jerseys till they come over here, Marty. You tracking him as he comes in? Did you see who it was? Yeah, it was number 10. Okay. Keslo Smith. You're yep. calling it Kieslo. Kieslo. So we'll go with that. What is it? Kieslo? Ooh, you got to like that, Chris. We got the lead. Yep. getting ready to uh, kick off. They have the lead. Hopefully they'll be able to carry that lead into halftime. It's homecoming here at Lakeland University and it's also big game day. The Cheese Bowl. We picked a good game to come out and cover Chris. Just not a good day. <laughs> the weather is, uh, well, although the players are playing hard and uh, certainly interesting seeing, seeing them try to navigate the mud. A lot of white jerseys on this uh, kickoff coverage team. Nice kick, carries back inside the 20 at about the 18. Taking it to the outside, but not getting very far unless they don't tackle them. Ball carrier takes it outside the 30. That was Grice on the, on the return. Oh, that was a good one. School of Muskies. Well, 50 ticks left. See if the uh, Falcons decide to attack here. 
With all their timeouts, it certainly wouldn't hurt to uh, take a shot deep. You also could be concerned, you know, you don't want to have a turnover and have the fish get the ball back. Lakeland will get the kickoff in the second half. I don't know if you were watching that very close. It was a wide receiver screen and the uh, non-receiving wide receiver, the guy in the white shirt, engages as a blocker before the catch is made. And uh, almost could have been called for an illegal block. Yeah, Alexander, number 80 on the catch. Not much there. 25 seconds. Second They're going to have to run some type of play, Marty. Can't run it out. Another same play, basically, only on the other side. And that time they do pick up a couple of yards. Lakeland calls timeout, Marty. I don't like that. I don't either. Let it go. Yeah. Play nice. Pick up of about four yards. Our next game will be uh, next Friday when uh, De Pere heads over to South. South's homecoming. We look forward to covering that game. Uh, you said De Pere wasn't really that good. Does that mean South has a bit of a chance? Well, they got a couple wins. They're not. Uh Manitowoc, South. They're not like they've been in the past. Uh, last year they were a juggernaut. <coughs> uh, this year they they got about two wins, two or three wins. They're they have they're not what they've been. Um, You're not what you've been either. Nope. nope. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> no. All righty, we got. Well, they said reset the clock to 15 minutes. Oops. 13 we're getting ready seconds. For, we're getting ready for half already. Except I think half's a little longer than that. Okay, 13 seconds left. It's third down and six. Lakeland leads it eight to six. They got a uh, two-yard run from uh, their quarterback, Michael Whitley. And then uh, we got the two-point conversion by uh, Kieslow Smith. And uh, that's the Lakeland scoring in the first half. Oh, come on. Are we having a good time yet? Well, there was a timeout on Lakeland, so they must have two left. Up on the board says two for them, three for... Uh, no, no, three for Lakeland, yep. two for... Uh, yeah, it's got two and two. There it is. Not quite sure. I guess they're hoping that Concordia has a turnover of sorts. Nixon, handoff. Grice on the carry. It looks like he got the first down and gets knocked down outside the uh, 45. And now you call timeout. And now, if Concordia wishes to use a timeout when the chains get set, they can, and they can throw a Hail Mary, or they're just going to... Yep. They're going to pass. Pass is incomplete, and that is halftime on an incomplete pass from uh, Concordia quarterback Aaron Nixon. And that brings us to the end of the first half. At halftime, can't see it right now. Graphics are down, but it's eight to six, Lakeland. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country, and as a parent. It's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. 
it's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 16 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Think getting dumped by text is harsh. Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it?
So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Being prepared is a part of who you are. But it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Na 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 na, I love you so. I love you, I love you. La 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 la, la 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 la. We're here. Yay! It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face droopy. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains can cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Last Only you can prevent wildfires. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry. For bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody! <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Well, Thomas, you got back at uh, Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland University. Uh, Chris Wright. My partner, I'm Mike Martin. 
Chris uh, Lakeland leads 8-7. to seven. They had a late scoring drive. Michael Whitley on a two-yard run, and then he passed it to Kieslow Smith for the two-point conversion. Uh, your impressions of the first half? Well, <laughs> obviously the conditions are just horrific. Every place you walk around here, just went to the restroom, saw Dave Galenetti, by the way, and uh, it just, just horrible playing conditions, and both teams struggling to get anything done. Each team basically with a drive, and that's why they they uh, they each scored, and it's eight to seven. I like the fact that Lakeland started to run the football late in the Look second this. quarter. They actually did run the ball a little more than they passed it with 18 runs. Yeah, and you look at the flip side. Concordia yeah. ran it just for uh, seven, and four of them was by the quarterback. So a lot of that's just loss, loss of yardage. So, you know, team that makes the fewest mistakes and you know maybe tries to run the football might win this one. And right now, that's favoring the, the fish. It's been an entertaining first half. Not always the best played, and a lot of that had to do, like Chris mentioned, because of the field conditions. It's a uh, Pretty bad out there. But uh, we'll see what the second half brings. The area, you can see it right where the kicker is uh, setting up the tee from the uh, 35 to about the 30 and out is uh, really chewed up. That's probably the worst part of the field. Uh, inside the 20 on the south end of the field is uh, probably the best conditions. Both teams, like we mentioned, are 2-1 uh, and one coming in in the first conference game. Lakeland won the conference last year, Chris. Yep. They went undefeated. Uh, Colin Burton, in his second season out here, has, has had a lot of success. Yeah, I believe he was. he's 10-4 and four in his career, and the team didn't make the playoffs. They got beat in the first round, but, uh, you know... Just getting to the to the show or the dance is, is the ticket in this yeah, conference. Exactly. Greg Etter is the head coach over at Concordia. He's in his ninth year, and uh, he's had a pretty good run. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting second half. Hopefully uh, the defenses for both teams, with the help of the field, <laughs> have uh, done pretty well. Well, we're ready to go. The only yeah. thing I don't see is officials, Marty. Uh-oh, somebody locked the bathroom. Why are the officials not on the field? Yeah, this is interesting. We're doing all call for Terry Verstrati and his five friends. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we wait a little longer just, just, just in case the rain decides to come? Yeah, really. Good point. You know what's going to happen about uh, quarter to four when we should be just about winding this up. When we're putting everything away. Four o'clock, yeah. Uh, we do, only, well, as our viewers probably know, we only have a one camera set up again today. Uh, camera number two is not functioning properly. Here uh, they, they come. They found that out uh, last time. Pardon me, last night at South. Oh, getting new footballs, I'll bet. But anyway, that, that camera not working, so uh, we're limited to a one camera setup, which... For the crew is kind of nice because then you have less or you have half the equipment to put away. Well, half today, the cameras anyway. today that second camera along the, the mud would just not be good. Yeah, there's, there's third, Dave over on the right, coming down the uh, right side, away, walking down, staying out of the mud. I mentioned, I said, how about the Lakeland show again, locker room show? What did he say? <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> Bring it back. Let's try this now with, oh, still an official coming out late. Not good. A little slow start to the second half. Lakeland received the opening kickoff. I think I mentioned that they would receive the second half kickoff. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. Well, they had that opening drive and turned it over on downs. And then right. Concordia got the ball and threw the first ball up in the air and was intercepted. And then... Again, Lakeland had a chance to uh, drive down, and they decided to go on a fourth down again, and they didn't get it again. And you Concordia punted, and then finally a stop by uh, on fourth down by Concordia, and that's when we had that uh, 
punt where the punter went down to his knee. Uh, I was going to say, you know, I mentioned this in the first half, but uh, the field is obviously in terrible shape. It's uh, quite tre treacherous, actually. And when I watch the officials uh, move around, it's uh, very difficult for them to get any footing, too. All righty, we got uh, Roll kicking off. Carries down, taken at about the 16-yard uh, line by the return man. Tenet looking, and he's not going to get very much. Picks up maybe a couple on that uh, return. It's going to be first and 10 for Concordia. And the rain is kind of just like a sprinkle right now, Marty. It's not like really raining, not but it's drops, just, huh? just it's a haze or a mist. A, a mist of uh, rain. Hopefully that'll stop. One thing I'm pretty sure we're not going to do is see the sun. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. I think you're a pretty good predictor. All righty. Ball is spotted on the 22. Nixon remains at quarterback for Concordia. He was 10 out of 19 in the first half. Keeps it. And he's going to get pushed back. Uh, he tried to run a couple there. times, but uh, his long was four. Well, it's according to the stat sheet here, he had uh, four carries for four yards. He had a net loss of twenty, uh, net loss of sixteen. But uh, cases he didn't do much on the rushing side. You're right. A lot of those are sacks. Yeah, exactly. And off to the running back. He uh, picks up maybe a couple at best. Not much. Grace, the ball carrier for uh, Concordia. This field is unbelievable, Marty. Just looking at it. Holy yep. cow. Third down and eight. Three wide receivers off to the left. At the bottom of your screen there, you see them. Nixon, no time. He's going to be sacked inside the 20. Good play that time. Making the sack was uh, Mason Ross. There goes some more of that uh, rushing yardage, Chris. Ross came into the game, fourth leading tackler. Mason uh, from Pulaski. But uh, what dash Wabbit on high school, former Jag. <laughs> former Jag, huh? Kick is away. Return man has it and tackled right away. Michael wow. Wynn on the nice catch and the uh, short return. Yeah, but great field position. The only negative is it's right in that 35-40 section. You mean that muddy section? Where would that be? <laughs> well, that's some of the worst right there. That was a quite a uh, field position advantage for the Muskies. Wow. Not a good punt. Ball spotted on about the 36. They have the win. There's not a lot of win, but they have it. Snap handoff to Meeks. Bounces through. Breaks another tackle. Broke two tackles on that run and gets the first down. Down to the 25. Eddie the ball carry. Pardon me, number 22. There you see it. Eddie with... Seven carries and 40 yards at six yards a carry. All their backs are averaging about four or five yards a carry. More of the reason to run the football today. Blitzing from the uh, left side of the defense. Hey, three or four. Looks Eddie good. Again. Short gain. We get uh, whistles blowing and the stoppage of the clock. Is somebody hurt? Nope. Or is there a Penalty. Hey, we got a speaker now. 
Terry Berstrati's speaker wasn't working in the first half. Trotting out for uh, his Braylon Basinger from Texas. Under 12 minutes after this play. Michael Whitley. Uh, oh, there's a motion. penalty. You could see the left tackle uh, moving prior to the snap. That'll cost uh, right. the Muskies right. five. From. You would have to go in and mention his name, Chris. You hey, just, these are you college are a, kids. You're a mean guy. They can they can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> see him in a dark alley. <laughs> Let's see if he can handle it. I think that's his uh, second uh, penalty today, too, Murray. Just Ooh. to rub it in a little bit. <laughs> a little salt in the wound. I think he had a block in the back, too. You know, it'd really be the a bummer if he didn't Rhinelander. really have another penalty. <laughs> yeah. He's a hold egg. All right. Rhinelander hold eggs. Hand off to Eddie. Bounces off a couple of tacklers still on his feet and lunges forward. I think he's got the first down. Don't see any flags on the field. They just keep pounding that side going behind from. We'll give him a little, little love there for his blocking. Ball looks like it's on about the 14-yard uh, line, I think. Him and Dustin there, watch, Peterson. Right there's one tackler, two tacklers, three tacklers. Boom. And finally two guys get him down. Good blocking on that side. Whoa. Eddie, what a move. Keeps from losing a lot of yardage. I don't think he's going to gain much, but boy, he made a minus four carry into a zero yard carry. Twisting and turning. Clock running, 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Graphics are up, Lakeland on top, 8-7. to seven. Whitley on a quick pass over the middle. Couldn't get his receiver. Pass goes incomplete. Going to be third down. I don't know, running the ball is doing so well, Marty. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think sometimes you got to change it up a little bit. It's just that it's really tough when that uh, first down run doesn't gain anything. Right. Eddie, that time uh, Concordia able to plug up the hole and stop Eddie. No, no I think they'll throw it. Now, this is the third time today, Marty, they've been down here. Disappointing that they couldn't get something with points here. All right, we got uh, ball on about the 13 yard line. It's going to be fourth down and nine. And, uh, they are going for it. They've done this uh, plenty of times in the first half, so nothing new. Blitz from the uh, left side of the defense, and then the pass is knocked down incomplete. <laughs> Bring in pressure, Chris. Yep. On the outside, there wasn't anybody to block there, and had to get rid of it quickly, and, and another turnover on downs. Long possession. Just couldn't uh, get points out of it. Ball is on the 13-yard line. It's first and 10 for Concordia. There's 9.51 left in the third. And pass is complete. That one going to uh, Devin Miller. Nixon was just 10 of 19 in the first half, 78 yards. Most of it on that one drive. Second down pickup of uh, five yards on the play. Another nice short pass. And gang tackling pushes them back at the uh, 20. That should be enough for uh, not just short of the first down by about a yard or so. 
That brings up third short. Just who made that catch, Chris? Edwards, Dante Edwards. Got a number on that boy? Five. Okay. He's from third and one. Arizona. I'm sure he loves the mud. <laughs> yeah, really. Probably <laughs> they don't get a lot of this probably down there, that's for sure. Well, okay. Not much going there. That's the other thing that makes it really tough is trying to uh, trying to grind out a yard. You can't get any footing, you know, for your lineman to try and get a push on the defense. Makes it really tough. Fourth oh. down. Lakeland should have good field position again. Win back deep, had a nice catch, a short return last time. Pitches, punt is up in the air and high, not much of a bounce, so seen that all day with uh, the field in such terrible shape. Yeah, Ball is going to be dead on the 47. Wind made a good decision there too. It's not going to bounce or carry a lot for a big roll, so you might as well, instead of taking the chance, good point. let it hit and stop, as you've mentioned it before, kind of like a... A Those cannonballs golf from, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> from Waterloo. <Yeah. laughs> Adam liked that one. Uh, sh do a shout out to Adam. Thanks, thanking him for uh, providing us with stats at the end of the first quarter and at halftime. Makes our job a little easier. Inside handoff. No, he pulls it out. Whitley keeps it, but uh, just is able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Whitley on the keeper. Brings up second and nine. He actually got it into the ball carrier's gut. And, you know, he wanted to clamp down on it, and all of a sudden it was gone. Whitley kept it and uh, tried to go off left tackle. Picked up a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and nine. Whitley looking, trying to get his receiver, uh, Morris, but uh, passes off the mark. Hard to be uh, accurate in weather like this. And I was thinking it's timing, yeah, same thing. <laughs> you well, and I were thinking the same thing because, you know, that's just a timing route. You drop back and where he normally would probably be is that would be a good pass, but today you got to counter for it being a little slower. Third and long. Yeah. Whitley looking, looking, dancing, Peterson, dancing. Nope. He eludes one tackler. He's got some room to run. He should get the first down here. Put your head down, boy. There you go. I think he's got it. It's going to be very close. Whitley making a great decision. See how his feet keep moving? That's what they teach you at the... Uh, Quarterback camp. Keep those feet moving. Good job. I didn't think he was going to make it there, Marty. He's a little happier when he kind of reached out there and right and across. Ball is going to be spotted at about the 48. Oh, they're going to call him short, Marty. Whoops. Nice. Wait a minute. We got. First down and uh, the Lyard Myers says, uh, there, he goes. there he you just go. There you go. Changes it over. Yeah, I thought he got a first down. And off. On Not the much. But that's okay. Nope. That's that all clock. right. Keep that clock running. That's all right. They're in the <laughs> tough part of the field here, the 45 to the 35 here. Worst part of the field. Six thirty-five and counting. Ball spotted on about the uh, forty-three. Whitley tucks it down. Looked like he was going to pass, and then he pulled it right down and ran it up the middle for uh, a good gain. <laughs> Into the mud. Well, Concordia did that right. They kept the end, kept him in, but uh, there was no defenders for the Falcons in there, and Whitley's. Rubbing on his hand. Hopefully, it, oh, it's just wet. That's good. Okay. Look at his towel. Look at him. Wet anymore. Yeah. He doesn't. It's kind of like 
bending over a little bit. Let's watch what happens on this play I'll here. I'll tell you, him. the resolution of our cameras is great. It's exactly what it looks like out there when we're looking at it from the booth. First back gets hit at uh, and pushed back. I don't think they got the first They're going to get a personal foul here, Marty. Roughing the passer. After the handoff? Yeah, they just drilled him. That was not necessary. That is called unnecessary roughness. That is unnecessary. Watch it? this late hit, Marty. Handoff? Way after, not even close. That was a killer. That Keep was the, the right alive. call. And, that's good for and now that flag is not yellow anymore. No. It's uh, brown. You know who's happy about today's weather and field conditions? The laundry service. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder uh. if they charge by the amount of mud on the uniform uh, or if it's just a flat rate. I have to wash this stuff twice. Looks like they're putting the ball down right at the 20. That could have got that quarterback Michael Whitley hurt. Yeah, you're right. Nice. Nice short pass and uh, gets knocked back right after making the grab. That's what you got to do, though, and you know you're going to get hit there. But long distance throws are just not going to be there for you today. Gain a three on the play. Ball on the 17 yard line. Clock running at five minutes left in the third. Lakeland on top, eight to seven. It's been a struggle for both offenses today given the field conditions. But your announcers have been battling through those conditions. Muddling. Muddling through. <laughs> I think that's an appropriate term for today. Right. Timeout is uh, called by Concordia. I know we mentioned it before, but we'll mention it again. Our next broadcast will be next Friday when the pier comes to uh, Sheboygan to play Sheboygan South in their homecoming game. And uh, I also believe on the north side of town next week Friday is North's homecoming. I think you're right. So both teams will be at home uh, with their homecoming. We will be at South. Uh, we will be back out here to uh, Lakeland University on October 22nd. Uh, I got it right here. Who Lakeland's going to play that day. They are going to play Wisconsin Lutheran. Another holy war. Okay, <coughs> we got second down, seven yards to go. Ball is on the 17 yard line. Lakeland trying to keep the drive alive. Eddie has uh, done. Uh, Quite a bit of damage from his running back position. Whitley sends him in motion. And Whitley on a short pass. He's got his receiver for the first down. That was uh, Peyton Peterson. Peterson, a nice catch in the first half. That's another big clutch one. First down. Okay, it's going to be first and goal. It looks like they're spotting the ball uh, about on the seven yard line. So it's a 10 yard pickup on the pass play. Whitley. Oh, they run the old off tackle play. You could see the, uh, I don't know if it was the guard or the tackle, pulled and led through the hole. And a big hole for Whitley, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Good call there, Marty. We get a replay. Look exactly on the right side of the line. I believe it's the guard. 
There he goes. Pulls. Boom. Oh, got a good block. Just enough. And great block out there on by the wide receiver also. Kozlowski, I think that was Marty. The, the Kaz. Yeah. Senior. Oh, he's got to get a job next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of scary. Oh, going for two again. Empty backfield. Faking the uh, jet sweep. Whitley keeps it and takes it in. Again, good blocking on the left side of the line. And I think, Chris, you mentioned in the first half they did a lot of running off the left side. Yep. Afterwards, Marty, there's a little Too extra much cur extracurricular activity. So Too much somebody's going to get a penalty on enforced on the kickoff. Too much penalty. Uh, celebration. celebrating. I think there was just... Uh, some, uh, just some little pushing and shoving. Ooh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be on Concordia. The official is looking right at the kid. Are they going to call him offsetting? We'll see. He pushed me first. No, no, he pushed. He's touching me. Chris, uh, there's 4:22 left in the quarter. But uh, seems like a bit of a meltdown by the Concordia defense. Yeah, all of a sudden they can't n stop the run. Well, I wasn't thinking that. I'm thinking two big penalties. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah, that's true. That I mean, personal Lakeland's foul. Lakeland's going to be kicking from the 50 now. They're yeah. not going to get very. Well, I shouldn't say this, but th there's a good prospect of them not getting good field position on this kickoff. We can hope. Hopefully, the kicker can keep his footing. You know, it sounds ironic. Yeah. We're talking about a kicker and feet, but uh, again, the last thing you want to do is give up, like you said, turf to the enemy. Um, the other thing, it's so Chris, hard it's a two-score game now, too. Nine-point lead. Good kick carries down near the goal line. Oh, it looked like he had an opening to the outside. Now he's going back the other way. Trying to get to the outside. He's going to get a pretty good return here, Chris. That was a nice run back by Tennant. I'm tired just watching him. <laughs> really? <laughs> I think he ran about 45, 50 yards. I take it all back, Isaiah. Smart running on your part. Oot. I'll tell you that number 23 for Concordia is just picking off guys left and right. He must have thrown at least two, maybe three blocks. And we don't have a number for that kid. Well, we tried. First and 10, ball in the 25. Give it to him again. Yeah, couldn't I, make the I'm magic never, that time. I'm never a fan of that, Marty. I'd never like it in the pros or in college. A guy runs about 50, 60 yards. Oh, and then, on, the next it, on the next play. Show me what kind of shape you're in. I All that uh, shake and bake cost him one yard. The shake and bake on the kickoff return netted him about 15, 20 yards. Nixon back, being pressured as he throws. His receiver fell down. Pass is incomplete. Nixon pass You'll see good pressure. And closest, uh, closest person to that pass was the uh, defender. And again, Lakeland sending guys from different directions and different people and different looks for the Falcons, so it's very difficult. I believe for Nixon to pick up where exactly that blitz is coming from. Yeah, a little bit behind the receiver and uh, gotta catch the ball first. I like that play though. That was a good idea. Let him get it out in the open and run. Just get the back out of the backfield there. On a wings chip spot. Hey, they forced. Uh, Concordia to have to at least line up like they're going to punt it. 
And uh, again, uh, some good decisions made. You had mentioned it by win the last uh, punt. Let's see what happens here. Kick is away. A real nice punt that time. And again, not much of a bounce. It dies on the 40. It'll be first and 10 Lakeland from there. Maybe almost you here. You see the punt and the plop. About a 36 yarder. He almost better, Marty. Did not even have someone return it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think you should still have somebody back there. You know what I'm saying? Just in case something goofy happens. You know, those balls are so dirty and wet. If one flew in the stands, I think I'd throw it back. <laughs> Wouldn't even want it. I don't want that dirty ball. All righty, first and 10 Lakeland. They had an extended drive the last time, netted them a seven yard run for a touchdown. Inside handoff. Uh, I'd tell you who it is, but uh, that could be a Concordia player for all I can tell. Fifteen. Meeks. Number fifteen on the carry. Second down. Very difficult to pick up numbers. Really? It's tough. Whitley's the uh, quarterback. Meeks uh, in the backfield. Splitting the running chores, Chris, keeping those running backs fresh. And Meeks gets hit in the backfield. Nothing doing there. Again, nothing wrong with that. Keep just the clock running, if nothing else. Well, and just the risk of the passes with it being slippery, and you know your receiver can fall down. You got a nice nine-point lead. You don't want something like an interception for a touchdown, or a sack and a fumble, or I'm not saying don't throw the football, Marty. I'm just saying. Don't be afraid to run it on a couple downs. Under two minutes left in the third. Lakeland on top, 16 to seven. It's been a slog out there. Pass is, uh, he had a receiver win wide open, and just overshot him. See, and that was one of those cases where you overshoot him, and next thing you know, the safety's sitting there, and. Oops, that could be trouble. But that one I didn't disagree with that pass play, and it was a good pass play, something that they've had some success with. And Just uh, off the mark. I think this is the first punt for uh, Lakeland in the second half. Brandon Pribernow, you mentioned his name, he's mentioned he's from Brilliant, is uh, doing the punting. He's, he got... Remember Jacob? Yep, yep. He got uh, late hit before. That's right. Yep. And he had one where Rocking he had to pick, pick it up off the, the ground. Yeah, the knee down. Punt. Uh, we got it. Actually, that, of all the punts today, that one bounced the furthest. Kind of had a little because side you, spin Because you aimed for the hard mud. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's getting colder or the mud is freezing. But in either case, it was a nice punt. It's like 60 degrees, Marty, but it feels like about 35. It's just a dampness in the air. Ball spotted right on the 20. October 1st, too. Yeah. September's come and gone, Chris. Only about 10 more months of school left. <laughs> <laughs> we have another year in. It's got to be pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, handoff to the running back who found a big hole, gains 10 yards. Grice. Grice had a 10 yard run in the first half. That's the biggest chunk of rushing they've had. Fake handoff, gets it out to the wide receiver, puts his head down. And Picks up a few yards. That was uh, Kevin Folker. Six 
Pick up a five on that play, makes it second down and five ball on about the 35 yard line. Clock is uh, running, 36 seconds left. Nixon uh, getting the signals from the sideline. He keeps it, running it up the middle. He's going to be short. Or he's, no, he might have the first down. He got it up over the uh, 40. Needed to get it to about the 40-yard line, and, uh, so he should have a first down, I there, would think. They didn't give it to him yet, Marty. They're going backwards. The official's kind of going, the umpire there is going to the side. Now he's coming back out to the regular, and now... Clock ran out while they were uh, making all those adjustments, and it is going to be a third down and one. So not quite a first down that time. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, Dave. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. All righty. Third down and less than a yard. Nixon's got a dirty helmet, Chris. Take the jet sweep, keeps it. No it may way. not have it. Good play by the Lakeland defense. And I'll tell you, it was a lot of defenders around him that time. Watch this. Fake the jet sweep, keep it. And the initial hit stopped him. Pribonel was in there. That, that was Pribonel making that hit, Chris. Fourth down. They're going to go for it. Wow, we look at the mud on those jerseys. Yeah, that's a tough part to a tough part of the field for Concordia. Nixon's going to throw for it. He's got his receiver, avoids one tackler and gets the first down. Gets blown up right at the 50. What a hit. Interesting call, but it worked. Rice on the catch, number 34. It's going to be first and 10. Could have got a stop there, but uh, again, with this turf, it's hard to. Yeah, you know, this isn't necessarily all bad because it, they're doing it little bit, little bit, little bit. They're chewing up the clock like crazy. Uh, we're in the fourth quarter. There's 14 minutes left in the ball game. Just don't let them get a big play. But maybe eventually you can stop them. The wide receiver said three out to the left. Going the other way and uh, woefully short of the uh, wide receiver that was intended for uh, Kevin Holker. Watch this throw, Marty. He's got, he can't get a grip. I mean, it's a quick timing pattern, and as you've mentioned for two days now, just to get a grip on the ball, we've seen what he can, how he can throw a ball. Aaron Nixon's got a nice little arm, but it just doesn't work in this slop. Oh, you're right. In the slot on the right side is uh, Tyler Majeski. Nixon spots an opening, goes for it, he avoids one tackler, and then his knee goes down at about the uh, 45. Uh, if he could have held his balance, he'd have gained uh, more yardage, but uh, again, the ground conditions are just uh, terrible. 
going to be fourth down and about five. So the ball's in Lakeland territory. Thirteen minutes left in the ball game. Lakeland sending the house. And quarterback gets hit, but he does complete the pass for a loss of yardage. Chris Dixon makes a nice play. Because you send a blitz, you can send your D-backs up a little bit. And good read by Dixon. Makes the stop. Forces Concordia into another fourth down attempt. Got it last time, but that was only on fourth and one. Fourth down, and like Chris mentioned, that pass went for zero yards. A great defensive play. Lakeland coming. He's not going to get it. He fumbles the ball, trying to spin off tacklers, but can't. It's going to be Lakeland ball near the 50-yard line. On a mob of Lakeland tacklers there. Good job by the defense. You're right there, Chris. They were swarming. Well, they held Concordia just 93 yards in the first half. They don't have a lot here in the second half either. Watch this. Watch the ball pop out. Loop, loop. I got it, I got it. And then look at all the Lakeland. There had to be seven, eight Lakeland shirts right there. I think, based on the mud and dark color of the jersey. Nine play drive, uh, Chris had chewed up a lot of clock. And uh, they got nothing. And, and Lakeland gets the ball in great field position besides. Yep. Well, we're at the 12.04 mark. I'd like to take about four or five minutes off the clock here. Jody Boys. Harrison is the wide out on the uh, right side, way at the top of your screen. Michael Whitley handing off to, uh, I think that's Eddie. He gets thrown flag, back. Flag, flag. <laughs> Flag from Widow Town, Marty. Yeah, came flying in. And it was yellow. That was a 30, 30. Yeah, that's because there hasn't been any pass interferences because they haven't. Uh, looks like uh, they're going to get oh. number eight on the penalty. That a, in, the, in the brown jersey or the brown jersey? <laughs> <laughs> and we got an injured player, Marty. Yeah. Terry What's the call, Roddy. first of all? <laughs> Terry... He's got a little bit of wash to do when he gets home tonight. All right, that uh, Concordia player gets up and walks off the field. That's always good to see. Baseball season, two days left, Marty. Yeah, it's well. I like watching baseball. I like box scores and uh -huh, right. I always followed it. Follow and all that stuff. You know, it's just, and then when it's not there. Oh, you miss it for a while, that's for yeah, sure. You got the playoffs, which will last another three or four weeks, but. Uh, you got a little dig on Bob Wetstein this morning at breakfast. And with his Cardinals? <laughs> yeah. You know. They're in a little bit of hurt. And the Fritch family? Thinking. Yeah, Ed's not too happy about that, I'm sure. Or right, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> First down and 20. Whitley on a little swing pass. Nice catch by Eddie, but yeah, he's not going to go anywhere. That's okay. Tick, 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 tick. Just keep the clock moving. 11.34, still a lot of time. This was high school. We'd just be starting the fourth quarter, so... Stay in bounds. No running clock today. No. Just don't turn it over, boys. Yep. Look at them just trying to... Now the mud is so thick. I mean, it's gotten turf. It's... There's no... Yeah. It's not just slippery, it's like thick, like you're walking down in those deep mud, sinking. 
I think we're going to have to call Scotty's landscaping on uh, on Monday. <laughs> Come in and fix the field. Third down and long. I think about third and 15. Ball is spotted right on the 45. Whitley looking, quick pass over the middle. He's got his receiver. Trying to get up it. a block, he does. He's got the first down. Smith spinning and is knocked down inside the 35, 25 yard line. He's low with a uh, great catch and run. There you see it. Spin off. There we go. Be first and 10, Lakeland. Big first down, Marty. And again, it goes back to running the clock. Ball on the for 24. A couple more minutes, you can run off the clock. Concordia doesn't have the football. 31 yard gain on that play. Inside handoff. Meeks keeps his balance. Steve Reagan, <coughs> freshman from Hobart, Indiana. Number 64 with a nice block. Pickup of about five on the run. Keeps the drive alive. Ball is also uh, deep in Concordia territory at the 19. Lakeland really grinding it out this afternoon, Chris. Hasn't been pretty, but uh, certainly been effective. Handoff ball carrier gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of a yard. You know, you look at some of these players, they look like they've been in mud wrestling. Yeah, really. Not uh, football. It's just solid mud. I can't tell you the nose guard or the two uh, nose tackles up front, Marty. Who? <laughs> I cannot identify their jerseys. Let's just put really? it that way. Whitley. Throwing a high one, and it's going to be intercepted. No, they're saying it hit the ground first. Bit of a break there for Lakeland, no turnover. But uh, the idea was good. The pass was short. Can't get Ooh. a grip. Oh, you're right. Boy, oh, boy. Fourth, fourth down. Yeah, fourth down. Fourth down, Lakeland. Ball's on the 20. Pass over the middle, incomplete. Again, a dangerous location for those passes. All right, well they didn't deliver the knockout blow, Marty, so a little life left in uh, Concordia. However, they have not shown much except for one drive way back in the second quarter the 13 minute mark when they scored to take a 7-0 lead but since then they haven't done much of anything they do have the wind if they if you want to call it that yeah there isn't much it isn't a factor like it was last night that's for sure and off to the running back trying to uh, grind out some yardage and does gets it up over the 20 down to 828 826 or like you like to say, tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick, tick. Again, if the Concordia line can hold the front, one of those receivers gets by one of the defenders who slips, could score quickly. Yep. So far, the pressure by the Muskies has been daunting. They haven't been afraid to blitz today either. Good blocking up front. Nixon gets the pass away and he's got his receiver. He's hit immediately. It's going to be a completion outside the 40 yard line. There you can see again. When he has time, he's got a real good arm, Marty. Look at that. And he can get a good grip. 
First down, Melvin. Didn't catch who that receiver was. Number five. Thanks, Adam. That was Dante Edwards. First and ten ball on the 40. Yep, now we're getting to the slippery stuff between yeah, that's the, the worst part of the 40 right and the there. 40. Talked about that all day. See? Oh, he's kneeling down. It should be down. It should be down. Terry. Come on. Nixon beat them by Roel. Look at this. knee down. You betcha. Look at that. There's mud on his knee. <laughs> Try. Run up the middle, Marty, or not. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. I'm glad we don't have to walk home through that. Just getting back to our car, it's muddy. It's muddy even walking to the to the truck. To the truck. And it's the grass wet. Isn't, yeah, and the grass isn't dug and up there, there. It's dug up quite a bit. Third and long. Yeah. Look at that turf. Six twenty and counting. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. The mud bowl. It's not the cheese bowl. Nixon sack way back. At about the 30-yard line. No celebrating, boys. Nice. Fourth and a bundle. I'm going to call it the 31, I believe. And they're going to punt, Marty. Well, you almost have to, don't you? Well, well, I mean, it's not like, you know, guys are open and you're missing them on your passes. I mean, no, but you're down to four minutes and 45 seconds left. There was a good kick. And a pretty nice roll. Pick it up. Don't drop it. Well, he avoids one tackler, but can't avoid the second. And uh, he gets it out over the 20 yard line maybe the 21 well they got what they wanted Marty they flipped the field it's up to uh, Lakeland now to hang on to the football run some clock they're spotting the ball on I believe it's the 21 Lakeland has it I think Chris mentioned time is definitely a factor now. It's a two-score game, uh, being 16 to seven Lakeland, and there's only 5:22 left. Throw it. I don't like that idea. I believe in running the clock, especially when you're up by two scores in a close, tough, muddy. Running back breaks through, gets it out to uh, 25, and uh, we get a whistle. Timeout, Concordia. They're in a tough spot, Chris. You almost got to start calling them early. You can't let the clock, you know, hope to stop oh. them when there's three minutes left. And then I don't like this call though. Personally, I don't like a timeout on second down because what if you all of a sudden get a first down? You just gave one up. I would have. I'd wait till after third down. Because there's still 5:14 left, and you need two scores. I just never liked, unless it's under like two minutes. Right now, I understand that. Where you start having yeah, to call it, yeah. but there's still 5:14. And See, I think the theory behind what uh, coach is doing for Concordia, Coach Edder is uh, conserve as much time as possible. Yeah. Because it's it's a two score two game. That's and I, if it was a, you know I just think you it's need. It's a one cor one score game. I say uh, you're. You know, probably more right in that situation, but I think in this situation, I just wait till one more down. I just wait. I just because what if Lakeland would get a first down here, and now and you the just time waste it. Doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, and you still have your three in the pocket. You've got to count on your defense to get a stop, and you need two scores. I think pretty soon we're going to have to call the game because we can't read the numbers. Yeah.
Another inside handoff running back. Meeks gets hit right away. Knocked down. Just imagine Concordia too. They have to get on a bus. Yeah, but they can shower first. Yeah. <laughs> They'll let them shower here before they have to ride home. Yeah, that too will be a mess. What a mess in that locker room. Oy. So now they're not calling timeout, which basically is the same what they just did. Lakeland is going to let it run down. There's 20 seconds on the play clock and running. They should See wait. How far down they take should it. Wait. Should wait. Should wait. We're Keep under waiting. 10. He can see it. The quarterback can see it right in front of him. Good job there, Michael. Very smart play. Whitley on a fake pass keeps it, tucks it down. He it depends, depends on the spot. The, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that. You're right. First down. First down. And that was big. First and ten, Lakeland, four minutes left on the clock. Lakeland with a two-score lead. Looking good. Don't turn the ball over, boys. All-out blitz by the Falcons, and they're going to get Meeks in the run it's in okay. the backfield. It's okay. You're still up by two. Timeout, Concordia. Little T.O. by them. Of course, on second down. <laughs> Come on, Chris. <laughs> Stop being so negative. <laughs> Number three. Well, you get a first down here, Marty, and it's pretty much over. Yep. You're absolutely right. They're out of timeouts. <clears throat> Last last night we talked about uh, the defenders, you know, not knowing where the offensive people were going, especially when they were throwing passes. Uh, you would think that'd be a similar situation here today with the rain and stuff, but it seems like it's totally different. Yeah. I mean, the offense has not gained any advantage in this. No. Not on this field anyway. Right. You'd think there'd be a slip or something, a receiver. Or that is not. Uh, I will say there has been some slippage and guys open, but right. they. And I, I know the Lakeland offense is on the field, but the Lakeland defense has provided a lot of pressure for uh, uh, Nixon, right? He Aaron Hick Nixon. He's keep it on the ground. Get it under two minutes, or pardon me, under three minutes. And off Meeks slipped on the uh, cut, and then he gets. Uh, oh! That's and just dumb. The penalty. Wow! What are you doing? Watch this replay as he's punching at the ball. Yeah, that's that's just not good football. And that should be it. <laughs> That 15 yards will uh, help the cause. 30-30 left. Wind it down 25 seconds, so should bring it down to, at the very least, to about a minute and a half. Dave uh, Concordia, that is, has gotten key penalties during the second half that have uh, resulted in uh, Lakeland maintaining possession of the ball and keeping drives alive, and uh, it's really hurt them. I, I understand the intent is to knock the ball out <laughs> when you're coming with uppercuts. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you got to be smart about it. And <laughs> everybody in the Lakeland stand <laughs> saw it. And it looked real good on our monitor, too. <laughs> yeah, all right. Great replay. Scott, a lot of great replays today. 
Richard Bartson on that top camera doing a great job following all the action too. He's had a day. He's had a weekend, two days already. Right. Wonder if it's easier for him to follow the ball when it's a, a daylight game versus a night game. I would think so. Except with the Except brown with ball, <laughs> the brown shirts. Except the brown both turf. teams are wearing brown jerseys. Yeah. Under three. And something we didn't count on coming in today is that running the football would uh, be the key. Right, yeah. Lakeland's going to be... Uh, but we thought it might in the opening cause just because of the turf and the team who ran the ball better is the team that's going to come out on top. Do you think that maybe Lakeland will change their uh, offensive philosophy even when it's no. a nice field? No. Meek's trying to get the corner, uh, didn't Meek's quite make it. Down. Don't run out of bounds. Loss of a yard on the play. <laughs> That'd help you out. <laughs> Morris, you're offside. Get back. You're way offside. You're way offside. He's good now. Yeah. Running back up the middle, gets it over midfield. It's going to be a fourth down. Uh, what are we doing here? Fourth and seven. I'd just as soon run the ball. Yeah, it's only about four, I would four risk, and four. Yeah, I won't risk a punt. I won't even risk a punt. He might call or a timeout, I, I wouldn't even do that. Well, he could call a timeout with a second left on the play clock. That's it's going to roll happen. down under a minute. There's seven seconds on the play clock, and uh, we are now under a minute left. And Lakeland does call a timeout just prior to the play clock running out. So it will be fourth down. I think they're going to send out the punt squad. Chris. <laughs> Uh, uh. They got it in the bag, Chris. Mendez. Richard Bartson on the top camera. Chris Mailoff in the truck, our director, uh, Miguel Mendez, our student helper today. Sarah Balzer was also here earlier helping with setup. Chris Wright and I'm Mike Martin. Uh, enjoy bringing you today's ball game. It's always nice to bring home a winner too, Chris. I mean, they couldn't have done it without us. Need a good snap, boys. Get that kick away. Concordia will be coming. Nice snap. Not a very good kick, but uh, it's all right. So it's 49.9 ticks on the clock. Yep. Uh, counting on Concordia to get two scores in a defense that's been stellar today. Yes, sir. And, uh, they certainly haven't been bashful about sending nope. the blitz. Oh, boy. I'm going to add three seconds. Uh, three man. seconds? Dennis, we all thought you were doing so great. How can you add three seconds? Oh, well. We're going to spot the ball on the 36, is that, or 37? Back, 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 back. Your D backs up. You don't want any slips here. Watch for a screen over to the side here, to your right side, Marty. They're still sending blitzers. Ball is uh, fumbled, and uh, Nixon gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Clock is rolling, Marty. And here you'll see it. Running. And I'll give credit to 
Jonah Carlson. He's the center for Lakeland. He's done a real good job as opposed to the Concordia Another center. Oh, Nixon so makes a good uh, move to avoid the sack, but then he does get sacked, and we're going to get a pull down by the helmet, and that's going to be a big penalty on Lakeland's Kevin Lewis. Good Lewis hit. A, yeah, made a good stop, but then got to lay off the helmet. Bad thing is it stops the clock, too, but... Uh, and that was your safety coming up, Marty, to make that play. So, again, sending people from different directions. Alrighty. Ball is going to be spotted on the 49 after that penalty. 26 seconds left. Oh, I heard a whistle. Yeah, me too. Nixon looking down the field. He slips by one tackler and another and throws it up for grabs and the pass is knocked away. It's incomplete. Second down. 13.7 seconds left. Right there at about the 45, Marty. 43 of Lakeland. There's like a sod <laughs> sticking off. Oh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Jeez. But probably two plays left. So even if they score, you have to do an onside and a score, and that's basically impossible. If you can get a sack, too, the clock would keep it's running. It's over, yep. Anything besides a, a first down or a touchdown, and this is over. Incomplete. Pick it up. Oh. And this one's over. There will be no miracle finishes today. Yep. Oh, come on. Does it matter, Terry? I know. I, you can't tell me that Dennis does a really good job, so it's not yeah. like he's... Dennis, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Close to a uh, illegal procedure, and that pass goes incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. Chris, any uh, comments regarding the game? Because we'll wrap it up right after this last play. Defense. Defense. I thought the defense did a great job. One, one possession is all that Concordia had a chance to score. One. Can we give MVPs to the defensive coordinator? Because I yeah. thought he called a great. Oh, yeah, I did. How many times did you say they're they're sending the house man from different directions? Only three rushers that time. Nixon. Boyd's one tackler throws it up and it's incomplete and that should be the ball game. No penalties. Lakeland a winner in a yes. slugfest on a sloggy field. They win it 16 to 7. You done? Well, you don't nod your head. They can't hear you nodding your head. Answering you. Chris is done. And uh, so are we. We want to thank you for watching. And. Uh, our next game will be uh, next Friday when we're at Sheboygan South. They host uh, De Pere for homecoming. Uh, with that, congratulations to Lakeland on a 16-7 win, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Thanks to the staff for their work. <laughs>